has been uh, an extraordinary success story for uh, the United States military and all of the services, but clearly uh, the Army and the Marine Corps have, have done the most. Uh, it's almost five years uh, since I came uh, to Iraq the first time, September 2006. And when I first came here as secretary in uh, late December 2006 and gave my first press conference uh, in front of the JVB, uh, there was a firefight going on in the background. And so the difference uh, that you have made is just night and day. And I thank you for your service and your sacrifice. My, my highest priority uh, in the nearly four and a half years I've had this job is to get you what you need to com complete your mission and come home safely, from MRAPs to ISR to MEDVAC and more. But you're the ones that have actually done the job. Um, I don't know how many trips I've made to Iraq. It's maybe 14, something like that. Uh, and this will probably be my last one. And I just wanted to come and say thank you and tell you that Working with you all has been the greatest privilege and the greatest honor of my life. So with that, uh, we'll get on to the serious business, which is if any of you have any questions, we'll do a little Q&A here, see which intrepid souls are willing to uh, actually venture forth and ask a question. And then the most important thing, uh, and my main reason for coming here, uh, is to get a picture with each and every one of you and be able to tell you individually um, uh, thanks, and to give you a coin. So, with that, anybody got a question? Yeah. Uh, how do you see the gov possible government shutdown affecting the military pay? The um, well, first of all, let me say you will be paid. Uh, I always, you know, as a historian, it always occurred to me that a smart thing for government was always to pay the guys with guns first. Uh, but uh, in all seriousness, uh, if the, based on some stuff I read this morning, if, if the government shutdown starts on the 8th and goes for a week, you'd get a half a check. If it goes from the 15th to the 30th, you wouldn't get a paycheck on the 30th. But you would be back paid for all of it. So that's, that's the deal. And I, you know, frankly, I remember when I was your age, uh, I did a lot of living from paycheck to paycheck. And, and so I hope this thing doesn't happen because I know it'll be an inconvenience for a lot of, lot of troops. Well, a good example of that is, uh, is the unrest in Yemen, um, which has really uh, eased up the pressure on uh, al-Qaeda of the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, and uh, it's also a concern that the internal security services of many of these countries have turned to their internal uh, problems uh, rather than the broader uh, CT mission. We will continue our efforts to work with these guys. We have all of our assets at work uh, on, on the CT problem. I think our government is pulling together um, as well as we ever have in the CT mission. There are still a lot of important partners uh, in the CT mission here in the region, uh, and we are continuing to work uh, very closely with them. Uh, I will tell you from my conversations with Field Marshal Tantawi in Egypt uh, and, and my talks elsewhere, they are very mindful of the risks of extremists taking advantage of these circumstances uh, and, and are determined to avoid allowing uh, extremists take advantage of these uh, uh, revolutionary changes that are underway in a number of these countries. Uh, but, but we have to keep our eye on it very closely because I think it is a period uh, while all these changes are taking place where extremists probably will try and take advantage, uh, including Iran. And, and we just have to keep our eyes open and, uh, and, and continue working closely with, the, uh, with our partners here in the region to make sure these guys uh, don't get a free ride. P.S.
KFC Peraza here. A few weeks ago, sir, I read that we might that our contracts might be extended past 2011. Any word on that, sir? In terms of our military presence here? Yes, sir. That's uh, that's basically a decision for the Iraqi government to make. Um, we are willing uh, to have presence beyond that time, um, but we've got a lot of commitments around the world. Uh, you know. Everybody's aware of what's going on in Libya, but uh, very few people are aware we've got 19 ships and uh, about 18,000 uh, servicemen and women helping on the Japanese relief effort. So if, if folks here are going to want us to have a presence, uh, we're going to need to get on with it pretty quickly in terms of our planning and, and our ability to figure out where we get the forces and, and what kind of forces we need here and what specifically the mission they want us to do is. Uh, I think there is interest in, in having a continuing presence, but uh, the politics are such we'll just have to wait and see because the initiative ultimately has to come from the Iraqis.